How do I stop sinning? Hi, I'm Bob Christopher, and that's our question for today on Basic Gospel Answers. But here's what I've discovered. When people are asking this question, how do I stop sinning, what they're really asking is this, how do I stop doing X? And you fill in the blank. It could be a sin concerning sexual immorality. It could be persistent anger. It could be lying. It could be all sorts of things that are plaguing you, that are ha that is haunting you, and you're trying to figure out a way to break that habit, to stop doing X. Well, I want to start this uh, this video with a passage out of Romans 14, and Paul gives us a definition of sin that oftentimes we overlook. And he's having a conversation about meat offered to idols. Should we eat it? Should we not eat it? And as he goes through that particular conversation, he comes down to this conclusion. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because the eating is not from faith. Now listen to this. This is the important piece of what Paul is saying to us. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So at the root of everything that we do, all of those things that we're labeling sins, all of those things that we want to stop doing, at the root is a lack of faith. A lack of faith in Jesus Christ in that particular area of our lives. So the real question that we need to ask ourselves is not how do I stop sinning or how do I stop doing X. The real question is this, how do I start trusting Jesus Christ in that particular area of my life? How do I live out Galatians 2.20? I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. So when we're saved, we're not just left alone by God to say, go out and do the best you can. No, God comes to live inside of us. Christ Jesus lives in us. Christ Jesus lives in you. And now you have a new way of life, and that new way of life in the flesh is to live by faith in the Son of God who loves you, who loved you, who loves you, and gave himself for you. So how do we live by faith in Jesus Christ? Well, the first thing I think we need to consider is this, changing our goal. Instead of living each day to not sin, Lord, today I'm not going to get angry. Lord, I'm not going to look at, at pornography on the computer. Lord, I'm not going to do this, that, or the other. We need to change our goal. We need to step back and see God's perspective, God's purposes in our lives. And in Galatians 5, 6, we read this, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. So what's God's goal for your life? A life of faith that's going to be expressed in love, both for God and love for others. That's the big picture. That's God's purpose. And that's what we need to focus on as our aim in life, to walk by faith and express that faith and love toward others. Timothy, or Paul's letter to Timothy, he said this, the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Well, guess what? In Christ Jesus, you've been given a pure heart. You have a new heart in Him. He's cleansed your conscience of all of those dead works, and He's put inside of you a sincere faith in Jesus Christ. So your natural spiritual desire is to walk by faith each and every day, and out of that is going to come love. So that's the charge, that's the aim, that's the goal. So how do we get there? Well, the first step is simply this, to consider yourself dead to sin. When you were lost, you were dead in trespasses and sins. You lived to gratify the desires of the flesh. As Paul said, sin was your master. But all that changed the moment that you came to Christ. That 
power of sin was broken in your life. That relationship that you had with sin and death went away. So you, you are no longer obligated to sin. You are now living new life in the Spirit. So consider yourself dead to sin. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So every day when you wake up, let this be a part of your thinking to get the day started. I'm dead to sin, but even better, I'm alive to Jesus Christ, to God and Jesus Christ. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another. You once belonged to sin and death. Law, the law kept you in that relationship, but now you have died to the law so that you can belong to another, to Jesus Christ himself, to him who has been raised from the dead in order that you might bear fruit for God. So in recognizing that you're dead to sin and alive to God uh, in Jesus Christ, you can recognize that God's desire, that God's purposes are that you are going to bear fruit for God. So change your focus, consider yourself dead to sin. Now present yourself to Jesus Christ. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. You've been brought from death to life. You have crossed over from death and you have been made alive together with Christ Jesus. And Christ is now alive, living in you. So present yourselves to God as though you are alive in Christ and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. You present yourself as a living sacrifice day by day to Jesus Christ so that he can live his life through you. You walk in the Spirit, so you consider yourselves dead to sin because it's true. You present yourself to God as though you have crossed over from death to life. Why? Because that's true. Now you walk in the Spirit. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So God's Spirit is living in you. God's Spirit has given you a whole new set of desires. And as you walk by the Spirit, uh, allow yourselves to be led by the Spirit. Here's the result. You're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. So instead of waking up every day saying, Hey, Lord, help me not be angry. Lord, help me not look at this or help me not do that. You wake up and say, Lord, I want to walk by the Spirit today. I want to walk knowing that I'm alive in you. I want to walk knowing that you're alive living in me, that I can express your life through faith. What's going to be the end result of that? You will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, I want to stop right here and make this one key point. The desires of the flesh do not go away. And I think that's what really confuses so many uh, believers, well-intentioned believers. They think that because they are now alive in Christ, that Christ is now alive in them, that their flesh has been eradicated and that they will never ever experience the desires of the flesh ever again. Well, they've set themselves up for disappointment. Why? Because those desires of the flesh aren't going to go away. Why? Because sin still lives in these members. And so those desires are going to rear their ugly heads time in and time out. But we're not obligated to give in to the desires of the flesh. We're simply called to walk in the Spirit. And as we do, we're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. The next thing, we want to rely on the power of God. We have the very power of God living inside of us. And that power has already overcome sin and death through the death, the burial, 
and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that power is inside of us. We don't have to fight sin through human effort. And we're not called to fight sin anyway. We're simply called to be strong in the Lord, to walk by faith in Jesus Christ. And as we rely on His power, we're going to see some amazing results. For example, Paul tells us in Titus chapter 2, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. So we have the power of God's grace living inside of us, teaching us to renounce ungodliness. We don't have to worry about that. We can trust Jesus. And Jesus is going to teach us how to renounce ungodliness and how to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So how do we stop sinning? Well, the answer is to start trusting. We start living simply by grace, through faith, in Jesus Christ. As we do, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh and we will start to see the fruit of God's life being born out in our very own. Instead of, how do I stop sinning? Let's ask the question, how do I start trusting? It'll change your life. Hi, I'm Bob Christopher, and we sure hope you enjoyed this video. We have new videos uploaded every single week, and we want you to be a part of this growing network of Basic Gospel YouTube subscribers. So be sure and subscribe. Also, ring the bell and get notified of new videos every time we post. And also, we would love to hear your comments. And you can comment on any of our videos uh, below each and every one. And we'll be sure to comment back. And if you have a special question that you would like to see us address, get that question to us. And pretty soon, you might see it as one of our basic gospel YouTube answers. Well, again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.